Hey guys, what's going on? Jason here and thanks so much for stopping by the shop today. So in today's episode, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some work on the front end of our Jeep. We're gonna start putting some parts on the front axle. We're gonna throw some linkages on, new diff cover, and probably the track bar. But first, I told you last video that I was gonna explain why it wasn't on wheels yet. Here's the problem. Um, this is the stub shaft for the passenger side. Now, unfortunately, it's got a crack in one of the yokes right here, so we're not gonna be able to use this stub shaft. So what we're going to do is we're going to order a new stub shaft and once we get it in, we'll start throwing the front axle together, uh, put the axle shafts in and get the wheels and tires on it. But right now we do have stuff to keep ourselves going, so let's go ahead and get to it. guys so the easiest place to start in all this is to go ahead and do the diff cover first uh, get it out of the way because once we put our linkage in here it's going to be a little bit difficult to get to our diff cover um, for the front end we're going to go ahead and use we're going to use a Dana Spicer diff cover that matches the rear end it's pretty awesome um, it also matches our steering box brace to a certain extent, so it's going to look really good on our axle. Um, first thing we got to do is, of course, remove the old one and clean up the surfaces, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you a real quick look at what our new diff cover looks like before we move on. Uh, thing's pretty sweet. Now, I haven't filled it with fluid yet because, of course, we don't have the axle shafts in and that stuff will just drain right out the ends. So we're going to go ahead and move on now. We're going to install the uh, knuckles on the outside here. Um, and then we're going to start modifying our axle to take our new track bar bracket. So here we go. Alright guys, the next step in this process is going to be to go ahead and throw on our knuckles. Now these are the stock ones, I just refurbed them, um, but the ball joint studs for 94 and below are going to be 100 foot pounds.
So the next part of this is you want to make sure that you put in the cotter pins. Um, you definitely don't want to leave these out uh, just in case something happens and the nut starts to back off. This cotter pin will save you. If you are going to change the ball joints, they usually come with new cotter pins and new zerk fittings to throw on there. So make sure you do that. All right, now the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to prepare to go ahead and put our track bar extension bracket on here. It came with our lift kit. Uh, a couple things that we got to do is we're going to have to open this hole up to half inch, um, and then we're also going to have to bolt the bracket up and mark a hole here for a bolt to go through. Um, if you've never done anything like enlarging a hole before, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can get a taper, which is what I recommend, um, but unfortunately I don't have one. So we're gonna do it with a regular drill bit. Now, if you're not careful, this is what we call a wrist breaker. Um, your drill bit is gonna grab, since it's such a small area that you're trying to cut, and it's gonna to try to pull your wrist in. So make sure that if you're using this, use a drill with an overrunning clutch. That way, if it starts to grab, it doesn't pop back on you and hurt you. So just be safe and uh, go slow, and you'll be able to enlarge this with an actual drill bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now, and. Uh, Get our bracket bolted up, mark it, and drill through it. Once again, if you're using a drill for this, set it in low speed and go nice and slow. Keep a little bit of back pressure on it so it doesn't grab and try to kick on you. And it's just that simple. Just make sure, once again, that you don't wallow this hole out and enlarge it too much. You want your bolt to be snug in there. But when you're done, you, you also want to put a little bit of paint or something uh, inside the hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use anti-seize on the bolt just so this raw metal right here doesn't rust to our fastener and make it impossible to remove later. And this is the track bar riser bracket that we got with our Rusty's off-road kit. Um, once again, here's the bolt where it passes through. So we're going to have to bolt this up. But another thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to slightly profile this right here. Um, let me move the camera and show you what I'm talking about. Now. So you can see here when we hold up our bracket that that protrudes just ever so slightly and is going to prevent us from tightening down the bracket very good. It's going to wobble a little bit. So we're going to have to profile this right here down some to make sure that we get a nice snug fit. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're just going to get a flap wheel and grind it down a little bit. I'm going to take a measurement and I'm going to grab a, a pin and I'm going to mark it to where it needs to be profiled down to. So instead of a marker, I'm just going to go ahead and use a, uh, a nail to scribe exactly where this has got to come down to. We don't got to take off much. We only got to take up about an eighth of an inch or so. So you can see here the line that we just scribed. We don't gotta take off much, but what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the track bar bracket to sit flush against this. If it doesn't sit flush against this, the track bar bracket itself is gonna rock back and forth. So we don't want that. We want everything to be nice and tight. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab a flap wheel and profile that down that much. Guys, always, always, always make sure you have your eye and ear protection when you're grinding something.
you're doing something like this at home, you want to make sure that you stop often and check your fitment. You don't want to grind too much away. If you grind too much away, you're going to be in the same situation as if you had too much protruding. So go ahead, take it slow, take off a little bit of time and test it. All right, so now we've got this thing completely profiled flat. The front edge sits perfectly flush with the bracket. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. Now we can go ahead and move on from here. I'm gonna throw a little bit of black paint on that just to protect it and keep it from corroding. All right, guys, so we're back. I've got the uh, track bar bracket loosely bolted up here. Well, not loosely, it's bolted up pretty firm, but instead of using the nylock nut that it came with, um, I went ahead and used a regular nut just so we don't ruin the uh, holding capability of this nut. Now, the next thing you want to gonna want to do is go ahead and lay down under here and locate this hole. Um, you can use a nail to scribe out the hole. And just a top tip, if you don't have a spring-loaded center punch, you can always just tap this nail into the center and mark your spot to begin your drilling. All right, now we're gonna unbolt this and we're gonna start with a small pilot hole and then keep enlarging until we're up to our bolt size. All right guys, now that we've got our hole drilled for our bracket, we're gonna go ahead and test fit it real quick. Uh, see where we're at and provided everything's okay. We're gonna go ahead and bolt it up Oh perfect lines up exactly like it should so we're gonna go ahead and Get it all put together And since this is the last time that we're putting it together, it's okay to go ahead and throw the nylock nut on there too. All right guys, it's time to go ahead and put the steering on. And what I wanted to do real quick is just come over here and show you guys the difference between the stock steering and the stuff that we just picked up. So we picked up uh, stock replacement steering from Crown Automotive. Um, it's in great shape. It comes with storage caps on all the ball joints to go ahead and protect them. Um, you can see here that our steering is in pretty rotten shape. Our stock stuff's got ripped boots. Um, the ball joints themselves are very, very loose. So it's time to go ahead and replace it. Now we're not gonna throw this away. We will keep it for a trail spare just in case something happens and we end up bending steering or anything like that. Um, it should do fine to get us off the trail. Uh, it also comes with a new steering stabilizer, which we will have a full spare for because our lift kit also came with a steering stabilizer. So bonus there. Um, but the first thing that I did is I went ahead and measured all these linkages and set this to what it was. Now, if all your stuff's worn out, there's a good chance that you're gonna have to go ahead and get an alignment when you're done anyway. But if you just ballpark it with a measuring tape and get everything kind of where the stock steering was when it came off, you'll be close. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff installed now, but it's all real good quality parts. So 
So now that we've got our steering in place, we're going to go ahead and torque these two nuts for the drag link down to 65 foot-pounds. So now that we've got our steering linkage and everything installed, we're going to go ahead and install our JKS telescoping track bar. Um, we're going to start by, of course, reading the instructions here. Um, everything seems to be pretty straightforward. We mount the chassis in first, um, and then we go ahead and mount the other side to our track bar bracket. So let's go ahead and get it done. Got a bushing on both sides of the track bar. We're in the track bar bolt through. And then we go ahead and put our nut on the other side. Relatively straightforward. Now it looks like we might have to cut this bolt down some because it looks like it might come in contact with a sway bar bracket, but we'll see when we get to that. And of course on the other side, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to put a bushing on both sides and the nut on the other. We're going to go ahead and tighten this stuff down. Um, torque specs here in the kit are 75 foot pounds. So we'll go ahead and just loosely tighten it now. We're not going to torque it down to spec completely. Uh, the reason is, is the vehicle is not on tires. So there's a couple of torque specs up front here that we need to wait for to make sure that the actual Jeep is on tires and settled on the suspension. Because if we do it beforehand, we can actually cause the suspension to bind. So I'm just going to go ahead and snug this track bar down and step back and take a look at it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, we got our track bar installed. We also got our new steering linkage installed. Um, we got our new diff cover installed and our track bar extension bracket installed. You can see here that these run parallel, which is extremely important to making sure that you don't have any bump steer. Now, that wouldn't be possible without using this track bar extension bracket. So make sure that if you have a lift kit and you do get this track bar extension bracket for the front end, that you utilize that. Keeps everything in check and keeps everything lined up. Um, in the next video, we're gonna be installing our sway bar. Uh, we will be doing shocks and hopefully we will have the stub shaft in so we can put the axle back together. This thing's really coming along. Uh, I thought it was gonna be on wheels and tires by now, but once again, you know, stuff happens in the real world. It is what it is. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys. Comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time, hopefully, finishing this thing up.